Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video for everything that you need to know on reversible reactions and recycling. So we're going to start off with reversible reactions and what a reversible reaction is. So the best way to do that is look at the most common reaction, which is nitrogen reacted with hydrogen to produce ammonia. This is called the Haber process. So I've got N2 reacting with H2 to make NH3. And as you can see, to balance it, I need two ammonias and three hydrogens. Now, when nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to make ammonia, ammonia at the same time is breaking back down into nitrogen and hydrogen. Now, if we were to write this, it's going to take a long time, so there's an easier way. So if you have a reaction where both the forward and the backward reactions are occurring, we can put a reversible sign in, and that's what this is here. So now you know what a reversible reaction is, we need to know what dynamic equilibrium is. So the best way to do that is to have a look at this graph here. This graph shows the percentage of my reactants, which is going down, and the percentage of my products, which is going up. Now, you can see at this point here, it's leveled off, it's become flat. At this point, both the forward and backwards reactions are occurring, now they're occurring at the same time, but the percentage of my reactants and products is staying the same. That's what dynamic equilibrium is. So the dynamic part means both reactions are still occurring. So in the one we just talked about, ammonia is breaking down into nitrogen and hydrogen. And nitrogen and hydrogen are reacting to make ammonia. The equilibrium part means that the actual percentage, the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen and the amount of ammonia is staying exactly the same. Now this must be in a closed environment. So basically, no gases should be allowed to escape or enter. On to the factors that affect equilibrium. So we're going to start off with the main one, which is temperature. Now, if you change the temperature, in a reversible reaction, there are two different types of reaction. There's an endothermic and an exothermic part. For the Haber process, the forward reaction is exothermic and the backwards reaction is endothermic. Now the important thing to remember is that if you increase the temperature, it favours the endothermic reaction. So here, it's going to favour the backwards reaction. If that happens, the equilibrium will shift to the left, and that means I'm going to get less ammonia and more nitrogen and hydrogen. So that's a bad thing. So therefore, you'd think, right, we decrease the temperature, because that favours the exothermic, I'm going to get more ammonia. However, if you do that, it's much, much slower. So what we do is we go for 450 degrees, and that's the temperature you need to remember for the Haber process. The reason we use 450 degrees is because it's a compromise between speed of producing it and yield. The second main condition is increasing the pressure. Now, if you increase the pressure, it will always favour the side with the least molecules. So what you need to be able to do is look at any reaction and work out how many molecules you have on the left and on the right. So on the left here, I've got one nitrogen molecule and I've got three hydrogen molecules. So in total, I have four molecules on the left. On the right, I have two molecules. So my least molecules is on the right. So if I increase the pressure, I will have equilibrium shifting to the right and therefore I'm going to have more ammonia. So that's a good thing. However, if you increase the pressure, it increases the cost. You've got to be able to have a container that's strong enough to go to that pressure, and that costs a lot of money. So what we do is we go with 200 atmospheres, and again, that's a compromise between cost and yield. Next section, recycling. Why do we need to recycle? Now there are several things that you just need to learn and bullet point and write down in the exam. The main one being it conserves Earth's natural resources. It means we're not going to run out of our metals, our oil, if we recycle. The other thing is it doesn't damage the landscape. You're not having to dig out more of the metal or more of the oil, so it's not going to damage the landscape. There are less waste in landfills. You're not throwing stuff in the ground because you're recycling it, so the landfills don't fill up. It takes up less energy than extracting from heating with carbon or from electrolysis. So 
you're going to save a lot more energy, which means less fossil fuels burned, less oil wasted. And then finally, you're not going to produce as much carbon dioxide. So again, if you're extracting from the ground, that's going to mean you're going to use up a lot of energy. You've got to get that from somewhere. That's our fossil fuels. So it's going to give out CO2. So there are less carbon dioxide emissions when you recycle. Okay, the final part is looking at life cycle assessment. Now there are four stages to a life cycle assessment, which are choice of material, manufacture of product, use of product, and disposal of product. So what you guys have got to do, they'll give you a product and they'll say, which of these two is the best product to use? Or which of these is the best choice of material? Which of these is the best way of manufacturing them? And there's no easy way to go through this, but just a few pointers for you. If we talk about choice of material, if you've got one that's renewable, that's the one you want to go for. How much energy or pollution is it going to produce? The one with the least, that's the one you're going to go for. Manufacture of product. How much energy to refine it or to make the actual product? The one with the least, that's going to be the best. How far do you have to transport the materials? If it's a long way, that's going to use up fossil fuels again, so that's going to be a bad thing. So you're going to go for the one that's nearest. And is the energy source renewable? Are you using solar power to do it? If you're using that, that's your advantage, so you'd use that manufacturing technique. Use of product, is it toxic? Is there one that's toxic, one that isn't? You go with the one that's not toxic. Will it produce any dangerous gases when used? And how long will it last for? If one's gonna be a one use and done, and the other one's gonna last for a long time, you're probably gonna want the one that's gonna last for a long time. And then disposable, is it recyclable? If it's recyclable, that's a massive advantage. Does it give off toxic chemicals when you bury them in landfills or when you burn them? Again, if it does that, that's a bad thing. So it's about weighing up the pros and cons of all the different ones, choosing the one that you think is best and explaining why. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.